Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Talking Threads, the textile innovation show with me, Jessica Owen. And me, Otis Robinson. This week's show is sponsored by Innovate, a five-day virtual event that connects innovators from across the textile and apparel industry to find suppliers, evaluate the competitive environment, attend educational programs and much more. The event takes place from the 25th to the 29th of October 2021 and to find out more please click the link below. And now in this week's news, digital print specialist Mutter has announced the release of its latest dye sublimation printing solution, the Expert Jet 1682WR. The new printer is designed to print wide format transfer paper of up to 1625mm in width, providing digital print capabilities for the interior decor, sportswear, promotional products and soft signage markets. Mutter says this latest innovation is fit for startups and well-established printers looking to extend their print portfolios. Elsewhere, researchers at North Carolina State University have developed a method to measure a fabric's roughness using 3D imaging. The team used an X-ray microcomputer tomography device to take an image of the cross-section of a fabric before sandwiching the textile between an artificial skin simulant. By using the same 3D imaging instrument once more, the team could more accurately measure differences related to friction. Kanita Mathieu, the study's corresponding author, says the method answers the call for ways to definitively measure friction to help the industry tune fabrics to be suitable for specific applications like activewear and home decor. Made Smarter, a UK industrial digitalisation movement, is deploying smart glasses to SME textile manufacturers to virtually fast-track their digital adoption strategies and navigate COVID-19 restrictions. The wearable device enables technology specialists from Made Smarter to perform virtual end-to-end -end production line walks of factories with a business as part of its digital transformation process. Additionally, the initiative is said to give manufacturers an opportunity to test how this emerging technology could be used in their business. One user noted its potential to aid machinery maintenance in textile manufacturing by connecting engineers and experts remotely. And lastly, researchers at Linköping University in Sweden have developed a conductive N-type polymer ink that is stable in air and at high temperatures. This new polymer formulation is known as BBLPEI and paves the way for printed electronics with high energy efficiency including organic biosensors, solar cells, transistors and batteries. The ink can be deposited by spraying the solution onto a surface, making organic electronic devices easier and cheaper to manufacture. Also, the ink is more eco-friendly than other N-type organic conductors currently under development, which instead contain harmful solvents. Now on to today's show, and earlier this week we caught up with Petri Alava, the CEO of Infinited Fibre, to talk about its new flagship factory that it's planning to build in Finland. You already have two pilot facilities that produce, I think it's 150 metric tonnes per year. And this new facility, I think I read, is going to be 30,000 metric tonnes, which is quite an increase. Um, so how much more waste will you be able to recycle and how many more brands will you be able to work with now? First and foremost, we are really a technology company. So we are technology keeps. We, we are our engineers and, and chemi 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 chemistries, our, our, our background. Now then, this this thirty thousand ton factory. It is of course it's it's a already a commercial scale factory, and we need about thirty five thousand tons of textile waste as as a feedstock. Uh, then the second question is that how how many brands can we serve? We see a strong demand from from the from the customers we have already, the brands we are serving today, like H and M and Tommy Hilfiger's. Uh, and we need to be still let's say continue the same route. So we we are still handpicking the the customers for the even for the flagship factory um, as, as the demand is, is very high and, and we need to be able to, to kind of, 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 of selecting the customers who, who are kind of ready to go for and have, have the right products to the, to the market launches. And am I right in thinking that you're hoping to confirm a location later this year with the aim to become fully operational by 2024 is that right? Exactly that's correct. Mm. And, and do you think that's achievable? Absolutely, we do. So we, we definitely do see that it, it's a kind of major challenge for us as well. We are a 30 people organization growing fast with the, with the personnel, uh, but we've been building a, a very large network of, of professional companies who are helping on, on us on, on this trip. So we've been hiring uh, professional financiers who help us on raising the funding. We've been uh, uh, 
I commendating also large engineering companies to help us on, on designing the factory, hiring the specialist company to look for locations. So we do believe that, that we have the, the resources in place. And of course, we are strengthening the resources all the time. I see. OK. Do you have any advice that you would give to startups or other companies like yourselves about how to scale their solution, how to commercialize it? Mm. Uh, I think that, that that we need to be remembering that that we are not there yet ourselves either. So of, of course, there's li- still a lot to be learned also by, by ourselves. Uh, we are on a good track to get there, but what we haven't done it, it yet also by ourselves. But I think that what we've been learning so far is, is that first of all, you need to be kind of having very high confidence on, on the markets by the kind of end users that, the, for example, the fibers are of a high quality and, and really testing it thoroughly in, in, the, in, the, in the supply chain of, of the textile. So the, the industry is confident of using the material, uh, thoroughly validating the materials, meeting all the, all the quality standards, and then also have, having the conformity of the brands that they, they see a commercial, high commercial value of, of the new products. So first lesson is definitely that, that you need to be working very closely with the brands and listening to their needs uh, and, and working kind of very, very closely, uh, the relationship that, that they are getting, what, what they are requiring. Uh, but, and, and then secondly, as, as the, if, if, if you're not talking of only generally sustainability, but particularly circularity, uh, this is a kind of entire system, ecosystem business. So you need to be very actively also developing the whole ecosystem uh, and, and training the ecosystem and learning together uh, that, that together the whole ecosystem is, is achieving the, the commercial scale. Well, it was great to speak with Petri. It must be a very exciting time for him and the company. And it's always encouraging to hear that a circular textile solution is finally gaining momentum. Yes, indeed, especially as we've been following Infinited Fibre Company for a while at WTIN. So it's great to see the business progress. Now it's time for a short video from this week's sponsor, Innovate. And after that, we'll be speaking with Fiona Harron about last week's Outlook event. Now, last week, Adana hosted its annual Outlook conference for the non-woven's hygiene, personal care and wipes industry. Taking place as a virtual event, Outlook offered a platform for players from across the supply chain to network and learn about the latest market developments. We're joined now in the studio by Fiona Harron, the editor of Non-Woven's Report International, who can provide some more information on the conference. So Fiona, so how did you find the virtual Outlook conference then? I mean, were there any key takeaways at all? Yeah, so Outlook was certainly a little different from the last edition I attended in Athens in 2019. But by now, I think we're all getting used to the virtual way of staging conferences. And it was therefore inevitable that Outlook would adopt this format, despite originally being planned to take place in Lisbon this year, which just so happened to be Adana's 50th anniversary year. So the virtual platform itself included a mini exhibition space for companies, a networking section, a news feed and the programme of presentations, which covered a wide range of topics from COVID-19's impact on the disposable hygiene industry to sustainable fluff pulp, the evaluation of femcare products, the future of filtration and lots more. Just to pick out one presentation to discuss something that is particularly relevant to the last year, and that is the face mask saga in Europe and how Meltblown became the golden fleece of the 20s. Now, Jonathan Borget, MD at Apis Rex Consultant, said that despite the global supply chain disruption caused by COVID-19, China remains the leading manufacturer of non-woven face masks, with the capacity in China going from 4.3 billion units to 73 billion units in just three months once the pandemic took effect. 
Borge also reflected on the huge efforts taken by the non-wovens industry to invest in additional melt blown capacity and said that 38 companies out of 55 who are active in the melt blown sector in Europe didn't exist a year ago. So look into the future in a survey conducted by new scientists that Borge cited, 50% of those surveyed think that by 2022, we should see the end of face mask covering regulations. But this, of course, will depend on the effectiveness of the vaccine. Borgia expects there to be an overcapacity of melt blown in the third or fourth quarter of 2022 as face mask production levels start to come down and China will continue to dominate the mask market, particularly as we start to see a decline in domestic demand for melt blown. I also understand that there was an update on the Index Non-Wovens exhibition given during the conference. Yes, yeah, so Index, which is the world's leading non-wovens exhibition, usually held in Geneva every three years and organised by Idana and Palexpo, was recently postponed from September this year to the 19th to the 22nd of October to allow more time for the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, at the moment, the organisers are feeling confident that Index will return to Geneva this year, although to cater to the new normal, it will take place as a hybrid event. This means that there will be a virtual platform too for those exhibitors who are unable to travel to Geneva so that they can still speak with their customers and do business. Now, speaking at Outlook, Magali Fakri, the exhibition director at Polexpo, said that the platform will be very user friendly and exhibitors can organise meetings in advance. She added that the virtual platform is only available to those exhibitors who have already booked a physical stand and said that the bigger the stand, the more visible they will be on the virtual platform. And of course, as the publishers of the Index Daily newspaper here at WTIN, we're particularly looking forward to being able to return to Geneva and meet with the industry in person. Thanks, Fiona. Some staggering statistics there on non-woven face mask units in China and the rise of newcomers entering the European melt blown field. It will definitely be interesting to see if the predictions are right about face mask regulations phasing out by 2022. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's also great to hear that Idana and Palexpo are confident that Index will return to Geneva this year and taking on this new hybrid concept. It looks like a growing number of events will adopt this approach as we navigate our way out of this pandemic. Well, that's all we have time for today, but join us again next week for another update on the latest textile innovations making the headlines. We'll see you then.